Hi everyone. So as you can see, I'm wearing my apron, which usually means I'll work in the kitchen. That is what today's video is about. I'll be fixing some of my favorite holiday foods and I thought I'd share them with you. And then also I'll share the recipes down below in the description box. The ones I'll share with you are just some that I have always fixed, you know, kind of traditional, I guess, for us to have during this time of the year. The apron I'm wearing is available on the Etsy shop. It feels so good. It's just a nice soft material. And I really like the combination of the farmhouse look with the pocket. And then we also have the same fabric with the plain pocket, same as the rest of the apron. I think that turned out really pretty too. The aprons are a one size fits all. They're made with an adjustable neck piece where you just move the knot around for however far up you want it to be. And then of course it ties in the back or if you'd rather you know, tie it in the front, that always works too. But again, very comfortable and a very durable, pretty fabric, I thought. And of course we only have a limited amount of fabric, so make sure to head on over to my Etsy shop if you're looking for a new chef's apron. So join me as I work in my kitchen today and enjoy. The first thing I'll be making today are these amazing peanut blossom cookies. Um, I remember these cookies as a little girl at home. I remember one time we had a school party and I took these cookies along. It was my mom's recipe and they were such a hit. And just ever since I make them again, often over the holiday season, uh, they're very simple, basically just a peanut butter cookie with a Hershey Kiss in the middle. And I always unwrap my Hershey Kisses first because once you, you know, bake them, they come out of the oven, you have to have a bunch of unwrapped Hershey Kisses to put in right away so they kind of settle down into the cookie. This will make more sense as I actually do it then, but so I'm starting out with that, just unwrapping these and then I'll be mixing my dough together. You'll just have to excuse the dishes piled in my rack. I don't have a dishwasher, so I often just dry them this way. I just haven't gotten around to putting them away. Our microwave acts really funny when I try to melt or soften butter in it. Um, it sparks, uh, it always scares me so much, so I just feel better to just melt it on the stove. You definitely should invest in a new one. To make these cookies, you form them into little balls and then roll them in white sugar and just bake them for 10 to 12 minutes. And then when you take them out, you put Hershey Kisses on each cookie, pressing it down until the edges kind of crinkle. For me, I like to use my cookie scoop. That way they will all be the same size. We are not big fans of chocolate covered treats uh, here in our family. I almost wish we were because I always think it looks so pretty during the holiday seasons. But there's one thing I always like to dip and I'm probably the only one that kind of eats it here in the family. But I always like to spread peanut butter between crackers and then dip those. And sometimes I'll even use an organic round cracker. I don't have any on hand right now. But I always tell myself it makes it a little bit more healthy if I go that route. But in this case, I'm just using a whole wheat Ritz cracker with the natural peanut butter. And I have some, I think it's called Peter's Dark Chocolate that I plan to use to dip these in. So here is a system that I use to melt my chocolate. I'm sure there's other ways, but at home we always kind of used a contraption like this. 
Uh, this isn't an actual double boiler per se. I think that's what I should have, but I don't have one. So I would just use this lid as my holding container for the chocolate, uh, put water in here, uh, create the steam, you know, boil the water, uh, get the chocolate melted here. And I usually put this lid on to kind of speed up the process. I'm not very good at guessing how much I need here, so that's why I'm just chopping some of it off. I can always add more then. I put the crackers in the freezer about 10 minutes before I coated them just to make sure they're nice and solid. The peanut butter I use is kind of runny. Uh, you might not have to do this depending on what you know peanut butter you use, but I thought for good measure I'll do it. And they really coated nicely. I'll put the crackers on the front porch to cool them off or to harden them. I just keep an eye on them, make sure nothing gets to them. I did end up coating a few pretzels because I had some extra chocolate. The next thing I'll make here is our favorite party mix. And I may have shown this before in my videos, not quite sure, but I wanted to fix some today so I thought I'd show you the process. Uh, very basic ingredients, uh, butter, Worcestershire sauce, Laurie's salt, and then the cereals of our choice. In this case, I always use Cheerios, corn checks, honeycomb, and wheat checks, and then some pretzels. Put everything together in a large bowl, the dry ingredients. And in this pan, I will melt the butter and make the sauce to pour over the cereal. And then I bake it in the oven for an hour and a half at 250 degrees, stirring every 15 minutes. You could always create your own mixture when it comes to how much you know cereal of each kind you want to put in. Our favorite is honeycomb, so I always put a whole box of that in, and then about a half a box of corn checks and wheat checks, half box, and then just a little bit of Cheerios, and then just some pretzels, uh, not too many. We don't like a lot of pretzels with our party mix. I always just use my roaster, like the bottom part and the lid, uh, to roast this mix in the oven. There is, of course, nothing more fitting during the winter time than a hot bowl of soup. In this case, I'm making chili soup. I don't have a recipe for this. I just put my own ingredients together, but I'll try to get my measurements uh, right here or measured so that I can put the recipe down below in the description box. Uh, this is a really simple soup. Uh, basically, just brown some hamburger. In this case, I'm using beef. Now at times I will use deer. This works quite well for chili soup because you can kind of hide the wild taste of deer meat with the seasonings that come in the soup. I don't really mind the taste of deer meat, but I know some people don't care for it. But I have this thawed for today, so I'm just using beef. For my tomato sauce or juice, whatever you prefer to use, uh, in this case I'm using um, a large can which is 28 ounces of tomato sauce and then also 28 ounces of diced tomatoes and then I have smaller cans diced and tomato sauce that are both 14 and a half ounces. I will often rinse out my cans with water 
That way I have a little bit more juice since sauce is pretty thick. Again, just kind of guessing here, it kind of varies on, I guess it depends on how much juice you like with your soup. And then I just have one can, a 15 ounce can of chili beans. We don't like a lot of beans, so I usually just add maybe one can if I make a large batch like this. There are, of course, lots of other delicious things to be enjoyed over the holiday season, but the last thing I'll show for this video is the very best hot cocoa recipe. It takes a little more time to fix, but it is worth it. It's not just your little Miss Swiss or whatever that's called mix. This is the real thing. A must-have to make this hot cocoa, if you ask me, is using whole milk. In this case, I'm using Paint Valley Farms milk. This is the only milk that I buy. We absolutely love it and don't think we could go back to any other, but again, that's just our opinion. Six cups of this milk, fourth cup of cocoa, in this case I'm using organic cocoa from Walmart, and a fourth cup of maple syrup, again, the real kind. Three-fourth cup of water, and you boil the mixture, and as that is heating up, I whip together the heavy whipping cream, which is also from Paint Valley Farms. This hot chocolate is definitely more bitter. It's probably not sweet enough for some people, but we absolutely love it. Even the boys will drink it. And everything in here is relatively healthy, so it always feels better to serve something like this. Thanks for hanging out with me today in my kitchen. And I realize the food that I fixed is pretty basic. A lot of you probably have your own recipes already, but in case you don't, they'll be down below in the description box, anything that you saw in the video today. As always, I hope you're all having a great day and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.